Good morning, and welcome to the chaos. And this week we are doing something definitely different than sewing because this was enough for a while. So this week I figured it'd be fun to paint on some pots and maybe add some embellishments, you know, with clay. I haven't worked with clay a lot, so that's gonna be fun, something new to experience. And yeah, there's not a whole bunch for introduction on this, it's painting on pots. So I will see you guys over there. So the first pot that I'm working on is actually a gift for one of my mom's co-workers. So that is why it has the very smoker theme to it. And it is lovingly called my pot pot. First thing I went ahead and did was gessoed the pot that I was working on, both the actual pot and the base tray, and then I sketched out my design on a separate piece of paper that I'd kind of molded to fit around the pot, and then I took charcoal and rubbed the back and then just traced it around the pot so I could get a similar pattern all the way around. After I got my outline done, I went through with my very super thin Posca pen and just filled in all of the lines with a black so I had a good base to work around. So apparently I didn't get any footage of me painting the smoke in, which is sad because it was totally my favorite part of doing this pot. This pot. But all I did for it was I used a rainbow of colors and used the darkest on the interior lines and a plain white on the edges to kind of make depth and just blended it together in the middle. So for the rim and the bottom, I went ahead and just filled it in black. So I'm going in with my Posca pens to fill in all of my my pot leaves and my spaceships and all of that fun stuff. And I'm using the darker color of Posca on the insides and then just giving a little highlight with the lighter colors. And absolutely loving how the metallic color turns out. I love the metallic silver one that I got. It is my favorite.
So next I'm going in with my super fine Posca to outline all of my subjects to kind of help them stand out in the smoke because it's looking a little muddy at this point and I think it helps a lot. Now I just went through and painted the bottom black too, to match the top and kind of give it that finished look that leaving just a, mo a gessoed bottom doesn't really have. The last step in this is putting a very thick few coats of matte Mod Podge all the way around. You want to make sure that it's the matte Mod Podge versus the glossy or the Liquitex glossy varnish because it will stick, especially when it gets wet, to the base and start ripping the paint off the bottom. Luckily, there isn't anything super detailed on this, but I learned my lesson the hard way with previous ones that ripped my design right off. And then after I've finished with the Mod Podge on just the design layer, I go over for one coat of Liquitex gloss varnish. So not on the top or the bottom, because I think it, I like how the glossy looks, but it keeps it from getting too sticky. Right, and here is the pot pot in all of its glory. I think it turned out fairly well, actually. I am pleasantly surprised with it. I think it's really cute. It kind of gives me Zoomies vibes, if anyone's ever been there. It, I, I, I think this is a, a Zoomies aesthetic if I have ever seen one. <laughs> All right, so the next one that we are doing is going to involve clay, which is super exciting. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tin foil and kind of shape out the mushroom top. I'm going to make it into a little mushroom so that I'm not going to use a metric ton of clay. It'll also keep it much lighter because I can only imagine that putting the amount of clay that that would take on top of this little pot would just knock it over completely. It would not be able to stand up. It'd be way too top heavy. So there were some parts that I wanted on the bottom to kind of shape it up that wouldn't stay in place. So I just took a hot glue gun and used a little drop on each of the edges to just keep them where they needed to be.
So next I took the clay and rolled it out into slabs that were probably about uh, three centimeters thick, like not super, not super thick, and then covered the tin foil with it. Apparently I didn't get any actual shots of that because I got really excited into what I was doing. And I just smoothed it out with water. And then once I'd gotten the, the shape fully covered, I took a snake of clay and ran it along the top and just worked it down to kind of create that, that lip where I wanted the edge of the pot. To. And then I made these little, these little dots that I didn't end up using at all because I changed the type of mushroom that I wanted to make halfway through. So I went ahead and let that dry overnight and now I'm going in with the red from the tube plus a little bit of black that was left on my paintbrush to make this this really dark red that I did not like and ended up changing relatively quickly. Um, I don't even think I got through painting the original base coat before I was like, mm, I don't like it. So here is what it looks like now. So now I took some, um, some gesso for the base since I realized at this point that I forgot to gesso the top, which is probably why that color of red turned out so dark. I mean, I also mixed black into it, which was stupid, but it's probably why it did not turn out exactly how I was hoping. So we're going to go ahead and gesso this because the base is going to be a light brownish tan beige color i don't know what the difference is between those colors so i think it's beige i think it's we're going for like a fleshy beige color so it definitely needs a coat of gesso before trying to put that onto the terracotta we're also going to go ahead and throw a layer of gesso on the base tray as well since we are already working on the base of the mushroom i figure this would just make it easier in the long run so now i'm taking the beige color and working it around the base and trying to figure out where i want the bottom of the mushroom to end and the red to begin so i just kind of futz with this for a little while until i'm happy with it which took a surprising amount of time and it just kind of kept growing, but I'm glad it did because it let me put some really cute detailing on the bottom that I wouldn't have got if I would have just done the red normally. Alright, now that I've gotten that figured out, I'm going with my light tan, almost white Posca and giving it an outline, which I'm going to go ahead and do later as well. But I, hope, I think this helps just give me a nice clean edge to work with. I think it helped in the end a lot. And now I'm just going through and adding in just kind of basic white lines to figure out where I want my ridges to go at the bottom. Um, Spoiler, it's nothing like how I laid it out here, because why, why plan when you can change everything halfway through and just do something completely different? So as soon as I have gotten everything figured out that I kind of know that I, I want to do, I'm going to take my dark brown Posca and just go through and high or low light shadow with a shadow around my white lines. But that looks a little boring, so I go ahead and just redo the entire thing. 
by putting a stripe of tan and then a line of brown and it makes it look like the like mushroom ridges that you see on the underside. I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end, it just took a while to get there. So here's how the bottom turned out, and I love it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a white Posca pen and kind of map out where we want our speckles, because they're not really dots. I'm using dots to mark it, but they end up being kind of speckles. And once I'm happy with like the general layout of where they are, I'm going through and kind of adding and subtracting like parts of them to make them kind of blobby because if you've seen what the non Mario variety of these mushrooms look like they have just a bunch of really tiny little not even at all speckles and I thought it would be really cute and would be a great reason to say that it's as lumpy as it is because they're lumpy in nature so Let's do a more natural looking one to combat the fact that I suck at clay. Um, and then after I've gotten them a little blobby, I'm just going through and adding a couple of just little, little dots and specks around them to kind of give some variety and interest to it. And I just, I love it. I think it turned out super cute. So to finish this off, I went ahead and did a couple of layers of matte Mod Podge, specifically on the bottom and on the tray to really give it the strength that it needs. And then on the top of the mushroom, on the, the mushroom head, if you will, I added a layer of Liquitex glossy varnish to give it that nice shine that I like. So that's the video. I am so happy with this little guy. He turned out way better than I was expecting because about halfway through I, I thought that he was just garbage. But then he turned out pretty cute actually so I'm pretty happy with him. I just have to plant in him but he might just live there for now. From now on, honestly, he's he's cute. And as for this guy, I'm kind of sad that I don't get to keep him, since this one is for one of my mom's co-workers. But it's not my normal style, obviously, very stony. But I do like how the clouds turned out, and I think everything turned out pretty pretty gosh darn cute so yeah thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it please leave a like below and maybe consider subscribing maybe maybe 
And I will see you guys next week with a spooky box club unboxing. So, all right, stay weird guys. Bye.